just combing over the logic and seeing how it actually fits. And if I, you know, find myself agreeing with the conclusions that she's coming to and how I can fit it into the rest of the knowledge base that I built up over the last decade. It has to come from within. For the stars, cause we're aiming high. Today I'm working on developing, you know, my astrological studies a little bit, but also I'm working on the chart of somebody that I'm going to be working with about their career. So I already, you know, help people with their astrological charts by looking in some usual places, uh, the 10th house of your career, the second house of your self-worth, the sixth house of your occupation. Um, obviously, I look at planetary placements and I take other factors into consideration, like where is Saturn? Saturn usually tells me a lot about your career. What are the aspects to that? Things like that. But then, of course, today I'm working on a different book and it's by Stephanie Jean Clement. And so as I read each chapter, I take notes on the whiteboard, I, you know, pace around and, and let it digest and let it ferment. A lot of good things that we can take from the book that she was discussing towards career, she discusses a lot about being creative. So she discusses the fifth house of creativity. Uh, fifth house corresponds to Leo, Leo's are usually creative. Uh, and whatever sign you have on the fifth house cusp, or if you have a sign there and a sign intercepted, then those signs are going to be very influential in how you express yourself creatively and what kind of career you end up having and how you express yourself in that realm. So she has all these many different methods and she's breaking it up, each one. It's about like a little over 200 pages, the whole book, and I'm about a quarter of the way through. And right now she's discussing how your creativity sort of breaks down into these psychological functions which tell you how you work best. And as you can see, I'm studying all of this stuff and figuring out how one works best. And I'm analyzing what she's saying about each of these psychological functions because she says one psychological function tends to dominate and the others tend to take a back seat. So you have fire, which represents intuition. You have water, which represents feeling. You have, you know, then you have uh, thinking, which is represented by air. And then you have um, sensation, which is represented by earth. So when you combine the fact that some of those are opposites and some of those work together. So, you know, like air, she's saying, could give you a logical thought process. And then water would give you, would you would see through the planets and water signs, how to create a flow based off of that thought process. So you're sort of working with everything together. And if you have more planets, I guess, in a water sign, in this case, she's really just focused on the sun and the moon and maybe uh, another planet that's heavily aspected or something that or you know, I guess, uh, prominently placed in the chart and how you might be dealing with that. So but looking at all that and I'm starting to realize that, you know, I don't read books like an air sign. I don't have a lot of air except my chart ruler Mars is in Libra. I like to read, I like to digest information, but how I do it is I sort of let it ferment and I, maybe that's because I have a lot of earth and water in my chart. But then my moon and my Venus happen to be in a fire sign. So I don't have a lot of fire, my rising signs fire, my moon and my Venus is fire. But then everything else is water or earth for the most part, aside from my Mars. So start thinking like, well, water is feeling. It's not all about logical processes and stuff. And then my moon and my Venus and, and fire signs and my rising fire makes me really about the unconscious and the ideas and getting inspired through those modes. And so I realized just from this reading session and through, you know, sitting down and letting the information ferment, just for a little bit, I started to realize, okay, 
I am, I've been reading this whole time. And the reason that when I read, I like read a chapter at a time and then I like walk around or I go do some, something active or I just pace around the house and I just let the ideas sort of flow and, you know, very watery, right? I create a flow in my head and they link to these images, my intuitive, unconscious, intuitive processes. And then it's sort of like watery, you know, assimilation of the information. And then there's the sensation, like I always said, it takes me a little longer to learn something. So like if I'm playing a video game against you, you're going to beat me maybe the first five games or 10 games. But once I learn the controls and once I, I have the experience, that's that sensation, that earth. I have a lot of earth. So then all of a sudden, like once I figure it out, like I'm going to know it in more detail than most people do, unless you have lots of prominent earth placements and you too have that ability to know in detail. Uh, so yeah, it's always taken me a little bit longer to assimilate and digest as earth moves a little bit slower than some of the other elemental positions, but I've always had that unconscious and intuitive process as well. And it's always been very much about the feeling. So the logic is where sometimes I get bored, but I've also developed that in my own way, my chart ruler having been placed in Libra. So you see how all this starts to come together. And when considered in just relation to those elements, you can see how the premises that she lays out, you know, seem to actually form accurate conclusions, meaning, you know, they, they're not talking about these elements, you know, for millennia in relation to each person's planetary placements and, you know, what, what signs happen to be on what house cusp and what area of life those correspond to. Uh, you know, it seems to be correlative. And if you listen, if you were to read what I just read or have me do your chart, you would probably, you know, experience for yourself firsthand that the information that she lays out seems to be adding up, which is always good. So, you know, just combing over the logic and seeing how it actually fits. And if I, you know, find myself agreeing with the conclusions that she's coming to, and how I can fit it into the rest of the knowledge base that I built up over the last decade. So yeah, so that's what I've been doing today. That's what's been happening. There's me obviously pacing around the house, you know, writing stuff down on the whiteboard, writing down definitions that I don't know. And that's all part of my logical process and, you know, how I develop. It's every day, like whatever I'm studying, I'm writing down definitions. I'm clarifying you know certain words i'm trying to be clear on everything because vocabulary is very important as i discuss in podcasts and other videos on my channel so yeah it's laying it out it's gonna be a nice short video here today but i hope that was insightful it has to come from within Come from within.